Welcome to Lecture 2.2, Dihedral Groups. Recall that in this series of lectures, we are introducing five families of groups. And in the previous lecture, we saw these two cyclic and abelian groups. And this lecture, we'll focus on dihedral groups. Dihedral groups are those that describe the symmetry of regular n-gons. While cyclic groups describe 2D objects that have only rotational symmetry, like pinwheels, dihedral groups describe 2D objects that have rotational and reflective symmetry. Regular polygons are an example of objects that have rotational and reflective symmetry. The dihedral group that describes the symmetries of the regular n-gon is written dn. If you think of cyclic groups and dihedral groups as actions, like what we started with in this course, then all actions in CN, namely the rotations, are also actions of DN, but there are more than that. The group DN contains 2N actions. N of these are rotations, which are also in CN, and then there are N reflections that we don't get when we look at the symmetries of things like pinwheels. However, we only actually need two generators. Here is one possible choice. So let's let R be a counterclockwise rotation by 2 pi over n radians. The same thing as we did with the cyclic group. And let's let F be a flip. Now fix an axis of symmetry. There are n to choose from if you have an n gone. So just pick your favorite one. Here is one of many ways to write the 2n actions of dn. So there are the n rotations right here, and then there are the n reflections, which you can write as some power of r followed by f. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could write these things as f times some power of r, though I should warn you that that power of r might be different. In other words, f times r squared is going to be or, sorry, r squared times f is going to be f times some other power of r. And finally, the last thing I should say is that some books, um, actually probably a lot of them, maybe even more than half, write this group dn as d2n. So they'll write it as, as d2n. And I don't know why this is so common. I think dn is a lot more natural uh, because it, it is the set of symmetries of a regular n-gon, but this choice is motivated by the fact that there are 2n elements in here. But throughout this course, I will use this convention of dn. So here is one possible group presentation of dn. It is generated by r and f, subject to the relations that r to the n is the identity. So if you rotate n times, you get the identity. And if you flip twice, you get the identity. So if you reflect across that same axis twice, that's like doing nothing. And then you get this curious um, action that RFR equals F. Let me show you a Cayley diagram. So if we use that choice of generators, then this, of course, is D3. We've seen this. And we've also seen why this holds, right? If we start at the identity or anywhere, RFR equals F. But this also holds for all of the other dihedral groups as well. Like this is D4 that I don't think we have seen yet. Um, so this is R, F, R equals F. And of course, I think I've said before, we can replace this thing with, with any relation that, that describes how this uh, four cycle goes together. So we could say R, F, uh, R, F is the identity. Or we could say R, F equals F, R inverse, or something like that. Or R, F equals F, R uh, cubed. Now, there is a related infinite dihedral group, D infinity, with the following presentation. And notice it's exactly the same as the one up here, except we get rid of this relation. In other words, that the rotation actually eventually ends up back at the identity. Now, we've seen its Cayley diagram. You know what's coming? Do you want to pause it and think about it? Well, here it is. Did you guess it? It's the same Cayley diagram as one, or actually of several, of the seven infinite freeze groups. So, in other words, 
a couple of those freeze groups were isomorphic to the infinite dihedral group. I want to show you another way to generate and also to think about and visualize dihedral groups. So if S and T are two reflections of an n-gon across adjacent axes of symmetry, let me draw what I mean by that, at least give a crude sketch. So let's suppose that S is the reflection about this axis, so th this is S, and let's suppose T is the reflection about that axis. Now, when I say adjacent, there, there are six axes of reflections. There's also this one, that one, that one, and that one. So by adjacent, I mean uh, this, this angle here is pi over 6. Then S, and then ST is a rotation. In other words, if you reflect across S and then across T, you actually get a rotation. And let's check this. So let's let's start with uh, six numbers. Let's let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm going to draw in. How about in in red? Uh, what? Actually, let me draw in uh, some other color. How, how about purple? Let me draw in purple where these corners get mapped to. Let's start with one. So let's reflect across S or let's apply S and then T. So reflect across red and then reflect across blue. So reflect across red, reflect across blue, I stay there. So that's, so I'm going to put a one right there. Now let's start with two. I reflect across red, reflect across blue. So that takes me there and that takes me there. So that's, that's two. Um, start with three. So if I start with three, I reflect across red and reflect across blue, I get there. Now, what happens to four? Reflect across red, reflect across blue, I get stuck there. And similarly, five, reflect across red, reflect across blue, it gets me there. And then uh, finally, six, reflect across red, reflect across blue, it gets me there. So notice that S, then T, is a rotation. And it's rotation by 2 pi over n. So it's equal to r in, in our notation of this cyclic group or the dihedral group. OK, so to see an explicit example, another way to think about that besides the picture is let's let s be equal to rf. That's a rotation, or, sorry, a reflection, and t to be equal to f. So th this is algebraically. Now notice that st is just rf times f, and the remember f squared is the identity. You're flipping or you're reflecting twice. So st is just r. So this is the algebraic reason for why that is true. Thus, dn can be generated by two reflections, s and t. And this does generate because when you multiply them together, you get r, and then using this r, you can generate dn with s or t. And you have everything. So this has the following group presentation. dn is generated by s and t. s squared is the identity. t squared is the identity. This is, both of these are just saying that they are their own inverse. And then s, t to the n is the identity. So if you think about what this means, is that means that elements in dn can be written using words in s and t um, that alternate. Because anytime you have s squared, you can just remove that. So Things in dn look like maybe s, t, s, t, t, s, s, t, s, t, s, t, s, t, s, t, t, s, t, s, and so forth. All the way up to s, t, s, t, s, t, and then how many of the, what's the length of this? This is going to be. 2n times, that is the identity. Because again, this st to the n is the identity. So this is the identity, and all of these end up being distinct elements. And moreover, the ones that have an even number of reflections are actually rotations, and the ones that have an odd number of re reflections, in other words, odd number of s's and t's, something like this, 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 and this,
those are reflections. So these are the rotations, words that have an even number of letters, and these are the reflections. I want you to think about what would the Cayley diagram corresponding to this generating set look like. I'm not going to tell you because I this is going to be on the homework, but it, it's an interesting thing. I would encourage you to pause the lecture now, now that you're uh, fresh thinking about these things, and see if you can come up with the Cayley diagram, maybe of D4, with this generating set. So one remark is if n is at least 3, then dn is non-abelian because rf and fr do not commute. However, the following relations, as we've seen, are very useful. So rf is always equal to fr to the n minus 1. And similarly, fr is r to the n minus 1 times f. So you, so you can always swap an f and an r if you stick an n minus 1 onto the r afterwards. And if you look at the Cayley diagrams or the Cayley graphs, then these relations should be visually obvious. It means if you remember the Cayley graphs are you have an inner loop and you have an outer loop. So you, so you have something like something like this. So the inner loop goes one direction, the outer loop goes goes the other direction. And then they are connected like this. And so all this is saying is that if you go um, one time around and then outside, so well, RF, that's the same as uh, F, R minus 1, and, and so forth. Okay, so let's talk about the cycle graphs of dihedral groups. So the maximal orbits of dn consist of, well, there's one orbit of size n containing all of the rotations, so that's generated by R and also possibly generated by a few other rotations, but at least it's generated by R. And then there are n orbits of size 2 consisting of the identity and some reflection, because each reflection generates an orbit of size 2, itself and the identity. So here's a picture of that. So here are all the rotations, and then here are all the reflections. Note that the size an orbit, as we've said before, may have smaller subsets that are orbits, but we don't necessarily draw those. For example, there is that's always going to be a size 2 orbit. And and depending on what r is, whether you know it's a prime number or a power of 2 or how it factors, there's typically going to be a lot of suborbit. Well, unless n is prime, this is going to have suborbits as well. But we don't necessarily draw those. We don't need to. Thus far, we have gained a lot of insight with dn using Cayley diagrams, group presentations, and cycle graphs. So now let's look at dn through the lens of another visualization tool, namely multiplication tables. So the separation of dn into rotations and reflections, as we've seen in the previous two slides, is actually visible in the multiplication tables. Let's use D4 as an example again. So here is its multiplication table where the rotations are grouped together and the reflections are grouped together. And I've added colors so the patterns are more visually obvious. You can tell right away that this group is non-abelian because there is no symmetry about this main diagonal axis. You can see a lot of examples like these four pink squares are not the reflection of these four or these, these green squares here are not mirror images of each other. So now just qualitatively, if you look at these elements, you can one thing you may notice is that all of these things are well, non-flips, I should say rotations. These are all rotations. And then these things are all reflections. This is a glimpse into a more complicated concept called a, a quotient. And we'll study this later. But for this example, um, if we take the partition of dn as depicted above, namely rotations and reflections, then this actually forms the structure of the group C2. And you can sort of get a glimpse of this right here. This is like a Cayley diagram with two elements. So what we have here is has the same structure as 
the Cayley diagram of the group C2 down here. So really what we're doing up here is we're saying, well, let's, let's say that, um, that this, let's call this R for rotation, and let's call this R for rotation, and let's call this uh, F for reflection, and this F for reflection. And so if we do a rotation, let's write it like this. So this says that if, if we do a rotation times a rotation, we get a rotation. Rotation times a reflection, we get a reflection. If we do two reflections, we get a rotation. And if we rotate and then reflect, we get a reflection. So this quotient of this D4, which, by the way, formally is a, a mapping from D4 to um, a group of order 2, let's call it C2, because it has the same structure as the group C2 down here. We can rename these four squares and these two elements, E and F. So this is formally a quotient from D4 to C2. More on this later.